Right, let's take you back now to our top story. Kenya's Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission has thanked all Kenyans for participating in elections. Chairman Wafula Chebukati says the election was free and fair and that Kenyans should patiently wait for the results, which will be released within seven days. The presidential elections derived from Form 34A, which is generated from the polling stations, and these results from polling stations are final. The results which you have been seeing displayed on the screen are not the official results. The official results are derived from Form 34A, which will come from the 40,883 polling stations, and Form 34B, which will come from the 290 constituencies. So those forms are what forms the results. Those are the official results. And a quick reminder that for the latest on the Kenyan elections, this is what the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission is currently reflecting. That is what is on your screens at the moment. It's a live stream. But remember, these are provisional results. To give us more on the latest developments now, uh, let's go to CGTN's uh, Jane Keo. She is following that election for us in, in Nairobi. Well, Jane... We're heading so to the final hours of the vote counting process here in Kenya. The country is awaiting the official results of that presidential and, of course, legislative elections. What can you tell us about the vote tallying process so far? Well, Beatrice, that tallying of votes is still going on. Remember, the, this was being done at the constituency level where votes were being counted, tallied, and announced before they were keyed in into a special IABC portal, which will then relay that information, relay the results to the National Tallying Center at the Bormas of Kenya. Now, currently, as you've seen there, the incumbent Uhuru Kenyatta is still on the lead on the provisional results with about 54% of the votes that have been counted against Raila Odinga's 44%. Now, this basically represents about 14 million votes that have been counted uh, so far. We do know that 19 million voters had been registered to take part in this exercise. Of course, it cannot be 100%, so certainly not everybody took part in this exercise, but we'll definitely know the exact turnout once those final results are announced. But like you mentioned there, the opposition has said they will not be accepting these results that are being announced by the IEBC. Now, the opposition is raising concerns with what they call with uh, with these forms that are used in collating the presidential results and that's the form 34a and 34b and beatrice just to give you a rough idea of what exactly these forms are 34a is the form that is filled by the presiding officer at the polling station once the votes are counted now this form actually indicates the number of votes each of the eight president presidential candidates garnered from that polling station it also indicates the number of rejected votes and those that are in dispute now the opposition claims that the IEBC has not presented this 30, form 34A to them and that's why uh, the presidential candidate Ray Laudinga is saying that he will not be accepting these results. Of course, there is a bit of tension here in the capital and in several places in the country. Uh, the usually busy streets here in Nairobi are unusually quiet, but a short while ago we did hear from the interior uh, minister, that's Fred Mantiangi, who urged Kenya to remain calm and allow the IEBC to do its work. He also says that those who have concerns, who have issues, they have to use the legal ways to resolve them. Beatrice? All right, Jane, let's bring in Penina for the moment. She's following this election for us in Eldoret. P Penina, what is the situation like in Eldoret at the moment, though, because that is a stronghold of uh, the ruling Jubilee Party? Well, Jubilee... Uh, it's a stronghold, uh, beaches, like you said, of Jubilee here, and it's a celebratory mood in Eldoret. We are in the city centre, and as you can see behind me, there's a huge crowd that's gathered here, and they say they're here to celebrate what they're saying is a solid Jubilee win. Now, like you mentioned, it is perceived to be a stronghold of Jubilee, so this is really not surprising, given the kind of result that we've seen. And I can tell you, beaches, people started monitoring those results uh, the whole night. They poured into social places, and as soon as there was the earliest indication of 
Jubilee winning celebrations broke out. They started gathering at this place as early as 10 this morning, wearing Jubilee uh, party t-shirts, having garlands as well around their necks on the motorbikes and vehicles. And they are saying that this celebration is going to go well into the night. There's a big rally planned at 3 p.m. this afternoon at this very spot. And all the Jubilee candidates from this county are expected to attend that celebration. There's no security presence at the moment. We've been asking people here if they are concerned about that fact, but they said they're not because it is a celebration. It is not a protest. It's a celebration of what they say is their voice being heard, bitches. Well, Jane, you're following this now from Nairobi. And of course, a little while ago, we heard from the chairman of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, and he thanked Kenyans for a free and fair vote then. But he did say that the uh, results may be released anytime within the seven day stipulated by the Constitution. So from what you're hearing, though, how soon can we expect the announcement of official results? Well, Beatrice, the ABC is certainly still relaying those results at the Bombers of Kenya, that's the National Tallying Center, and those are, like you mentioned, uh, the provisional results. Now, final presidential results are not expected in two to three days, but like you know, legally, the IBC does have a seven-day window period, but previously, the IBC chairman has been on record saying, regardless of the situation, the maximum number of days that they would actually use to announce this result would be four. And again, just like I mentioned before, that all this is determined by the forms 34A and 34B to make that final announcement that is what will determine who exactly is going to be the country's next president well Penina these there are preliminary results that um, have been uh, released here and they are indicating that uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta is in the lead those are still preliminary results we are awaiting the official results of course there but what can you tell us about the reactions to the preliminary results and to the news that uh, the opposition may actually reject those results Well, we posed that question to uh, quite a number of residents here in El Torret, and they said for them, really, there's not a single question about the credibility of the process. They said the voting exercise yesterday, as far as they were concerned, went on smoothly. There were no incidents reported. And so they said they weren't expecting any other kind of results, except for what we've so far seen, even though it's just a provisional result, like you mentioned. But they say, really, it's a reflection of what they wanted to be known. That's what they're saying. They say that the IABC so far has Conduct, conducted itself in a very fair, in a very credible manner. They say there's been no confusion about it. And so for them, they're saying really it's a victory for them as the electorate because they say this was their vote. There was no challenge about that as far as the electorate here is concerned. That's what they're saying. And really they're, to, to, they're, they're insisting on the fact that it wasn't a party-based campaign or party-based election for them. They gave Wilson Gishu as an example saying that here there were candidates that were not necessarily with the Jubilee party, but they did get uh, they did get their vote, that's what they were saying. So for them, they say this just goes to prove that this isn't really a party a party election, but it was an issue-based election for them, Beatrice. Right, uh, Penina Karibe joining us there from Eldoret, and Jane Keo joining us from Nairobi on the Kenyan election. To you both, uh, thank you.